Okay, so another really common instructional arrangement or teaching arrangement that we come into contact with in the ABA field, at least, is naturalistic teaching or natural environment training. So how can we put that on the chart? So let's do a couple practices of that. So new scenario. We basically have come into our, our center and we're doing some tacting program with our learner and we're going to be embedding that in play. The amount of time is going to vary across the day depending on what you're doing, right? So you may choose an activity to play with with your learner and tacting is not an appropriate program to be working on for that whole time or whatever. So this might vary a little bit more. So like we saw in discrete the discrete trial charting, that is something that we watch that record floor move up and down, but that's okay because the chart accounts for it. So Amy, we're going to chart some tacting and our learners are playing with some toys and we're playing for 22 minutes and they had 17 correct tacks and three errors during that time. So again, you can guesstimate or you can use all kinds of fun tools like the Celeration Finder can help you find the, this record floor. But I'm old school and I just put it in my calculator. One divided by the number of minutes. So I did one divided by 22 and I got this 0 0.045. So I'm just gonna find this over here. And that's gonna be my record floor, 0 0.045 right there. And then if you wanna kind of double check your work here, see how it's right by the 20 minutes. That's how I know I am close um, in charting in the right spot. So then I'm gonna multiply that by, you said 17, right? Mm -hmm. So at the end of that amount of time, you're not gonna be charting in real time, but after that 22 minutes ends, then you're gonna chart your data. So the time 17 would put you right here at 0.77 something. And again, we just get close and that's good enough. And so there's my little dot there. And you said three incorrect? Yeah. Okay, so I would put my X's right here at the 0.136, somewhere kind of around here would be just fine. Awesome. And there's my data for that amount of time right there. Cool. So then the next day we come in and we're working on that same tacting skill, but our learner loses interest and we have to move on to something after seven minutes. So in that seven minutes, we didn't get our 20 trials done. We only got seven trials done and they got them all correct. Okay. So now we're looking at seven minutes. One divided by seven puts us right here at 0.14. You see that huge difference in our amount of time right there. There's our counting time bar or our record floor. So you see that we had a way less time that day. So that's really obvious just looking at the chart. Then we'll multiply that by, you said seven and they were all correct. Yeah. Beautiful. So if you do seven minutes and you get seven responses, then without doing the math, you know that that's one correct response per minute. So that's an easy one to just chart at the one per minute. And zero incorrects means that we're going to take our X and put it below the counting time floor right around here and that's fine. The cool thing about that is that not only do we see that, you know, that huge change in the record floor, but we can also see that in a shorter amount of time, our data look better. So what does that tell us in terms of analysis for our learner? I think that's a really important point that you couldn't see that difference unless you're using the standard acceleration chart. I'm Amy. And I'm Liz. And we are Octave Innovation. We teach people how to implement precision teaching, get their stuff that they're already doing. If you do discrete trials or naturalis naturalistic teaching, we teach you how to get that on the chart and bring precision teaching into what you already do. So check out the link below. We have offerings for individual practitioners as well as for organizations setting up systems, etc.